Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Boris FX, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you why the new BCC Plus Cinematographer's Toolkit effects are a welcome addition to the other effects inside of Continuum 2021. All right, so as you can see, we are in Avid Media Composer. And one thing that I do want to point out before we get too far into this tutorial is the fact that if you haven't updated to the most recent version of Continuum, Continuum 2021, you're really doing yourself a disservice because believe it or not, there are more than 80 new effects inside of Continuum. That's right, more than 80. Now you're probably thinking, well, how is that even possible? Are you talking about presets? No, I'm talking about actual effects. Keep in mind that a little while ago, Boris Effects has purchased the Digital Film Tools suite of effects, and those effects are what has been added to Continuum. And in this lesson, we're going to talk specifically about the light effect, which is one of my favorite effects inside of the new BCC Plus effects that you'll now see when we head into the effect palette. All right, now what we can do is we can start to click through and as we click through the different categories you'll notice that we have the standard continuum effects and then the bcc plus effects well anything that has a plus beside it is an effect that came from the digital film tools suite of effects now what's important to keep in mind about those effects is that those effects are really uh, designed to be in-camera effects, something that would have been done on the set, something that would have been done in the actual camera to give you a very specific look. All right. Now, what we're going to do for this lesson is I'm going to head on down to the BCC Lights category. We're going to head down to our BCC Plus Light Effect. And what I'm going to do here before we get rolling is just add a couple extra layers on top of video track number one, but we are going to apply the light effect directly onto our clip. Now you'll see why I added the couple extra layers in just a little bit. Now, most people might think that at this point, I'm gonna say what I always say, which is a great place to start, is by using a preset. And yes, that is true. However, with the BCC Plus effects, we actually have a different way that we can now work. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to step into effects mode. Of course, as always, I have it mapped to Shift and Y on the keyboard. You can always find it right here at the top of the timeline. And once I step into effects mode, you'll notice the standard effect editor breakdown of all the different parameters. To be honest, I've always found this way of working very clunky inside of Media Composer. Just not very user friendly, but of course, it is the only tool that we have until now. Now, with other Continuum effects, we're accustomed to working with the FX browser. We hop in, we choose a preset to work with. It works a little bit differently here. Instead of the FX browser, we now have access to the FX editor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the FX editor that's located at the top of our effect editor window. And what's going to happen is a new window is going to open. And if you're familiar with Boris FX optics, this layout is going to look very familiar to you. It's basically the same interface. What we have over here on the left is all of our preset gobos that we can work with. We have the canvas in the middle with a few canvas options along the top. We have some metadata located in the upper right and the parameters over here on the sort of, you know, right side, right lower corner. Now, what makes this very unique is the fact that whatever I do in here is actually going to be directly translated back to the effect editor once I step out. Let me show you what I mean. What I'm going to do is just grab the corner pin parameter, which I am actually going to use. And I'm just going to adjust the corner pin like such. And I'm going to say apply. And as soon as I do, you'll notice that when we head back into the Media Composer interface, the corner pin parameter has been immediately applied to the effect editor. Do the work in one location. It immediately transfers over to the other, which is huge. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to head back to the effects editor and I want to set up a look here. Now, for me, as much as I like the vertical blind look, this is actually not the look that I want to have for this example. What I'm going to do is just scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I got to be honest with you, I never thought that wood basket would be one that I would use, but it is actually one that I'm now using for a lot of my window looks. Now, 
I'm just going to roughly set up a corner pin. Now, that actually wasn't the corner pin that I wanted. I'm just going to zoom back here. There we go, because I want to have this window kind of like this here. I think that's actually even not too bad. Make sure it's a little bit on the straight side. And what I then have the ability to do, once I have its position roughly correct, is we can come in and adjust really whatever parameter we want. So I'm just going to come down to scale. I'm just going to ungang them together. We're just going to stretch this out a little bit. I don't want it too much over my talent's head. I'm also just going to adjust its overall position here just to have it sit about there. I don't want it overlapping our talent too much. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I think I'm just going to adjust its brightness a little bit here just so that it stands out a bit more. And what I'd also now like to do is to jump in and actually lower the background light of the entire scene. Now, remember when I talked about this effect a little while ago, I said that this effect and these really this suite of effects inside of Continuum is really designed to mimic something that's happening uh, before this was shot or basically while it's being shot. So what's very cool is that I actually have the ability inside the effect to adjust the brightness of the shadow in the entire room. So take a look at this. I can now start to lower the shadow value and now look at what's happening here. This actually looks a lot more realistic than it did before. Now what's also very cool is at any point if you're happy with the way things look, you can navigate right up here and create your own custom preset. Now we'll talk a little bit more about custom presets when I show you how to bring in a custom gobo in just a little bit. Now a couple other things that I do want to show you. Let's talk about compare mode. All right. Located right up here at the top. Okay. We can of course have an AB comparison to see what it looked like before we started, what it looks like now. We can of course do a split screen like such. Okay. Of course top and bottom split screen. But here's a very cool one. Okay. And that is photo mode. I really love photo mode. Why do I love photo mode? Well, there's going to be times where you're going to want to get in and sample a few different gobos. Like, for example, let's say I want to look at wood basket and one of these other wood brooms or wood burnt. What I can do is I can actually take a snapshot. All right, so I've taken a snapshot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say view the snapshot. Now, you'll notice that nothing has happened here. And what I want to make sure that I do is set this up to be A, B. And you're going to notice that these two look identical to each other. However, before when I was looking at the compare, it was what does the before look like before I've applied anything and what does the after look like? Well, with snapshot mode, what I can actually do is now just change one of the values, one of our preset gobos and leave everything else the way that it is and compare it to the snapshot that I took of the overall screen. So this is a fantastic way for you to quickly get in and say, okay, maybe I need to see what wood bark looks like compared to what I had before or water reflection. You know what? I think wood basket is working perfectly. I think we're going to leave it. So let's just come back up here. We're just going to turn our snapshot off and we're all set to go. Now, believe it or not, I'm actually really happy with this, except I want to add a little bit more realism to this. All right. So all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to come down and say apply. Now, of course, as soon as I do that, again, everything's transferred over to the effect editor. If I needed to make any adjustments, of course, I can step in and grab any one of the, in this case, the corner pin parameters, make whatever adjustment I need. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go and track down another effect. And the effect that I'm looking for is the rain effect, BCC rain, which is part of the particle section. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to drag it down here onto video track number two. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm viewing that track. And of course, you'll see the rain appears over top of everything, which is all fine. What I do just want to see here is I want to see the rain a little bit better. There we go. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to have this rain appear as though it's the shadow of the rain appearing in our blinds here. Now of course this is supposed to be a disheveled room. That's why the blinds are sort of all out of whack. That's why we switched over from that uniform vertical blind look. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to come down to pixel chooser slash mocha. Now I love working with mocha. Whether I'm tracking or not, it's just a fantastic tool to quickly get in and to be able to do something like what I am about to do right now. I'm just simply going to grab the XSplain tool, and because these windows aren't really a uniform shape, I'm just going to sort of grab the XSplain and just draw very rough shapes around here like this. All right. 
And we're going to draw four of them. And what's very cool about this is that what this is going to do is it's going to work as a mask for our rain. I'm just going to close Mocha. I'm going to say save. And now you'll see that the rain is only appearing inside the window. Now, it is very hard cut off, but of course, always keep in mind that we do have the ability at any time to come down to our pixel chooser mask. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to feather this up just a little bit, like 10. Just take the edge off it just a little bit. And what I'm also going to do, keep in mind, I mean, our opacity is a little bit on the bright side. I don't want it to be that bright, kind of like that. I can even get in and adjust this a little bit. But what I'm now going to do is I'm actually going to adjust the color of the rain because I want it to be a little bit more on the gray side because I need this to look like it's a shadow. Bring it down to about there. I'm going to say OK, and that's looking a lot better. So now you'll see that as I drag through, I now have the shadow of rain coming in the window. And if I was to throw in a rain sound effect, this would actually really give it the feeling that it was raining outside. And of course, what I would probably do at the very end is I'm just going to close the effects editor. I'm going to come back here. I'm just going to deselect the rain particle effect and I'm going to navigate up to film style. I'm going to grab our fast film process. I'll just drag it down onto video track number three. This is where I like to use the power of the FX browser. I'm simply going to click on FX browser. What I can now do is simply click through all the different looks here to find the one that I think is going to work the best. That one's not too bad. That one's obviously a little bit blurred. Even bleach bypass is great. Just looking at that rain there. But of course, you can pick any one of these presets that you want. And once you have one that you like, and let's even sort of go with that one there. I'm simply going to say apply. The effect is now applied. And this composite is now done. Okay. And you can see what we started with and what we have now. You can see a very, very different look between the two. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump over to a different shot here. This shot comes to us courtesy of CineStudy. I love these guys and all of the great free resources they supply online for you to get in and work with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to our light effect. I'm going to come to BCC lights. I'm going to come down here to our light effect. I'm going to drag it and drop it. You'll notice there's our great Venetian blind look there. What I'm going to do, of course, step into effects mode, into the effects editor. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that one of these gobos is selected. All right, I'm just going to zoom back a little bit here. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to head on over here to the right hand side to where it says gobo. And you'll see there's the gobo there. But more importantly, I have the browse option. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse to my desktop and you'll see here I have the Continuum logo in black and white. It's basically just a black and white flattened image. Nothing fancy going on here. And I'm going to say open. Now I'm going to give the FX editor a second to load that image. And what I can now do is to create almost like a little gobo, like a light that's being projected in the scene to behind our talent. And we can put this over his shoulder like that in an interview situation. Let's just give it a little bit more brightness and a little bit more blur. And what you could do in any interview situation is to have the company's logo or something like that. And you can add it after the fact as though it was added on set. But then you don't have to worry about, you know, if it was added on set, the client comes in and takes one look and says, oh, I really wish we could remove that. The beauty part is now we can simply say, well, do you like the before or do you like the after? And for me personally, I think that the BCC plus light effect takes this shot way further than the next level by simply being able to get in, adding this light gobo. And you saw I added it literally in the matter of a few seconds. Now, don't forget, if you subscribe to Continuum, this is a free update that you can download right now. And for more great training, you can head on over and check us out on our YouTube channel. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.